and welcome to Roadmap 2019, our forum where we talk to some of the major actors in the journey that is the 2019 general elections. I am Ladi Akiri Duluale. Thanks for joining us. My guest on this edition of the program gives INEC a pass mark in its conduct of the 2019 election. He, however, places major blame for the various problems in the process on the political actors across the political space and says electronic voting and collation of results may not prove to be a solution to the problem of speed and accuracy in the process. Now, please join us as we talk to veteran human rights lawyer and activist, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Femi Falano. Advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Fem Falano. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Now, uh, I think the proper way to begin this would be to ask, what's your general impression about what has happened in 2019, these general elections? What has been your general impression about the process? Well, you know, there are many actors. Many actors were involved or are involved, you know, in the process. At the level of the political parties, some of the actions are really disturbing. The use of talks across bird, the attempt to derail the process and manipulate the electoral process. the legal deployment of troops, as well as bombing of INEC offices, destruction of election materials, smashing of ballot boxes, and the rest of them, and general terrorization of voters. We are thought that we have gone past this level. For the INEC, apart from the postponement of the presidential election, which was avoidable if we were more organized and if election materials are printed in Nigeria. But shamefully, we either had to go to South Africa or Belgium or London or wherever to print election material. That's why we have been in this kind of uh, embarrassing situation. I think I make the charges, statutory duties, to a large extent, commendably. But there were saboteurs. There were electoral officers that were compromised. But at the end of the day, INEC has been able to operate independently and happily, happily. The two leading parties, the APC and the PDP, have been accusing INEC <laughs> of bias, you know, uh, either in reverse or bounty or whatever. So I, I think that's okay for INEC. Unlike in the past, when election results were taken to Abuja, were announced in Abuja, where the local situation, you know, resisted region. And that was the practice for 16 years under the PDP. But now with innovation of technological, you know, uh, methodology in conducting elections, it is no longer possible, you know, to go to Abuja to announce results of elections. Results are now announced at the unit level. We still have problems in a few areas where the coalition was hijacked. But generally, what happened in 2019 was some improvement, except that we are too forgetful. <laughs> you know, except that we are too forgetful. And what bothers me as a Nigerian is the fact that 
the political leaders, and some of my colleagues in the human rights community who were pressurizing President Jonathan to deploy troops for the 2015 elections. Now I believe it's illegal to deploy troops for elections. Those who engage in balance and action now pontificate to some of us on how not to rig elections without apologizing to Nigerians. Oh, we, we, we were caught with champs and ballot boxes in 2007. Oh, I have repented. Now, they have come around now to teach us about, you know, the beauty of democracy. Some of those who were asking INAC, to conduct a do or die election. And now the heroes of democracy, you know, the teachers of democracy. But for the Nigerian people who are the victims of electoral manipulation, of electoral violence. Attempts can be made not to, I mean, Nigerians have refused to be provoked. It will be a major catastrophe in some countries where the degree of provocation was not as serious, people have gone to wars. To f people have fought wars in defense of their franchise. So the Nigerian electorate have tried not to be provoked. But we could have done much, much better. I mean, no, I mean, again, understanding the desperation in accessing power in Nigeria, and particularly in a bourgeois environment, there isn't anything so strange in what we have witnessed, where the law has not been allowed to deal with thuggery, to deal with violence, to deal with ballast smashing. You couldn't have found anything better. Nobody is in jail for engaging in, in the manipulation of the electoral process in 2015. Nobody has been jailed in any of the states where local government elections were rigged. And by the way, by the way, the state electoral bodies, in the majority of the states, conduct the worst elections in Africa. It is so bad now that opposition parties no longer waste their funds and resources on local government elections in Nigeria. So we're talking of general elections. Yep. The 2019 general elections, with all the shortcomings, for me, it's an improvement in many areas on the part of INEC, on the part of the electorate, where we have continued to have problems. To be honest with you, is the desperation on the part of the political class to hold on to power so tenaciously, as most of the time illegally. But uh, I want to point your attention to what you started off with, which is that the number of players. Uh, I remember you, you were one of the leading lights then in the then NCP uh, to open up the political space um, yeah. uh, and to say, look, this whole idea about putting such onerous conditions over the issue of the forming of political associations is antithetical to democracy. And so the space was opened up and you know, now we have 91 political parties and when I last spoke to uh, the electoral bodies authorities they did point out that there are more than a hundred associations just uh, waiting for the elections to end they are waiting to be registered as well uh, do you think we've gone to too little from too little to too many there's no way you are going to constrict the political space particularly to two political parties that are neither 
ideological or principled. Hence, you could be in one party in the morning, change to another one in the afternoon, and before you go to bed, you return to your original base, you know. So, it was very necessary. And I would say, say, with profound respect. And I'm regards to the fact that we're talking of a population of about 200 million people. Having 100 political parties or 200, it's not the problem. The problem is the content of the manifesto and programs of those parties. Are they parties that Nigerian people can invest their hope in? Are they parties that can guarantee the future of your children and mine? Are they political parties that can take Nigeria, that can turn our poverty to prosperity? But if you just set up political parties to endorse other candidates and collect money, or you turn it to family affairs, there are problems. But in terms of the number, if you go around the whole world, we do not have many political parties here. But it is the quality of the parties that should bother us. If you have the new political parties, There may be political parties that will say, oh, sorry, we just want to defend the environment. Green parties in Europe. There are parties that will say, we want to promote education in Nigeria. Others will say, we want to ensure that every Nigerian has access to basic health facilities. And, I, and political parties may simply say, our interest is to ensure that the economy of our country is dominated by Nigerians to promote prosperity. When you have such political parties that are addressing issues, the number becomes irrelevant. And when you get to that stage, where parties transcend the individuality of the funders or, you know, the big guys that, or godfathers as we call them, then they are likely to say, since our programs and manifestos are similar, why don't we work together? And I'm not talking of adoption on the of elections. So it is a process where parties will merge on the basis of similarity in ideology or philosophy. So, but. Because, I mean, the National Assembly has amended the Constitution through alteration 4 of the Constitution to say, if you fail to win election, 25% of the votes cast in the presidential election or a governorship election, or you fail to produce legislator, oh, thou shall be banned. That won't, that won't advance the cause of democracy in the country. And while you have brought out that law, you haven't prevented other political associations from, from registering as political parties. So we still have to go back to the drawing table. What nature, what manner of political parties do we expect? What type of political parties, you know, that will really expand the democratic space, advance democracy in our country, defend popular interest. So that's the way I look at it. The elections are now over. So attention is going to shift. Although there are a few issues. Yeah, like, but, if we have yeah. time, we'll, but likely, we'll, we'll yeah. talk. Yeah, but likely they are over. And attention will now shift to the temple of justice because a lot of people will be headed in that direction. Uh, going by what we just discussed about the, what has happened. Do you think the judiciary itself, having been under a great deal of scrutiny in the last couple of months uh, uh, in the run-up to the election itself, uh, some of the principal actors accused of corruption, the chief justice,
parties suspended over the issue of non-declaration of assets and uh, lawyers like yourself, I don't mean you, but lawyers like you, raising questions about the process of his suspension and about the motives and so on. Do you think the judiciary is actually ready to attend to these issues that will come up before it in a way that people can expect that they were better served by going to the judiciary than heading to the streets? Your question is loaded. And I'll go about it this way. Our courts are already dealing with disputes arising from the electoral process. Over 600 cases have been filed challenging the lack of internal democracy in the parties, whereby godfathers impose candidates on political parties and the electoral. Those cases are in court, and our courts are dealing with them, although by now, quite a number of them will have been overtaken by events. With respect to the tribunals, again, our courts are going to dispense justice within the limited ambit of our electoral jurisprudence, which is one of the most backward in the world. 